All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much to the organizers for the opportunity to speak here. And so I'm actually a neurobiologist, a neuroscientist by training, but I'd like to tell you about a photonics application which my lab has developed over the last few years to address a key outstanding question in neuroscience. Okay, so here's our motivating question from the biological perspective. How do different patterns of neural activity in our brain drive different sensory percepts? So let me give you an example. You're probably familiar with this image. You can see the faces or you can see the cup. The way neuroscientists think about this problem is that somewhere in probably in your visual cortex, there's going to be a group of neurons that are encoding this, or generating this percept uh, by their population activity. And the way neuroscientists diagram this is by looking at, say, a number of spikes, these discharges of single neurons in space and time. When you see the face, you, see what, you get one pattern in your cortex. When you see the cup, you get the other. But we have no way in neuroscience to causally test this hypothesis and ultimately break this neural code or, or understand its key syntax and logic. And so my lab realizes that we had to develop a new technology, really building on the work of many other people, so we can write in extremely specific of patterns of activity in the brain to see if we can drive specific percepts. Okay. So to read the neural code, we're going to use existing technology. This is not new. This is two-photon functional calcium imaging. The neurons in the brain express a fluorescent dye whose fluorescence corresponds to the activity of the neuron. We do this in mice at the moment, but maybe someday in higher organisms. We place the animal with a little window in its brain under the microscope, a two-photon laser scanning microscope, so we can image the activity at reasonable speeds. And we can extract these patterns while the animal is experiencing real sensory percepts. But the goal here is to extract these patterns and play them back into the brain without the stimulus to see if we can generate the same type of perception uh, in the animal. I won't explain to you how we measure perception, but suffice it to say that this is about the photonics application here. Okay. So we're going to use to write the neural code a technique many of you might have heard of called optogenetics. Very powerful approach where you take a light sensitive ion channel, in this case channeldopsin or variants, and express it in neurons. This makes them very sensitive to light, and this beautiful image from Ed Boyden's lab sort of gives you a fantasy of what optogenetics could look like, but this is not actually how it works, as you can't shoot a little blue laser beam into scattering tissue like the mammalian brain. However, there is a solution to this, and that's requiring multi-photon light, at least in the upper layers of the cortex. And we, want, we had a number of key challenges we had to overcome, and I'm just going to show you the results. And so the schematic of this microscope has two arms. One is a traditional resonant scanning two-photon microscope. And the second is a novel approach in which we can actually generate three-dimensional holograms of laser light, of this very high-powered um, ultra-fast laser in the brain. And to show you what those holograms could look like, in the next slide. By the way, the name of this approach, we decided to call it 3D Shot, which is scanless holographic optogenetics with temporal focusing, which you heard about previously. And so this is what we can see. So we actually can measure holograms we can generate with single shot from our laser in the brain. Now, this is actually taken by through a fluorescent material. So we can see what it looks like. When you see these are three little movies of these spots with 50 spots, 100 spots, 400 spots. And we can generate these patterns directly in the brain taking advantage of two photons to limit our effects of scattering. We have basically user-defined control over these patterns. We can take the same number of spots, in this case 175, and just stretch out where they are in space. Now, each spot, the idea here is targeted to one neuron in the brain, in this case the cortex of a mouse, that's going to photoactivate it with extremely uh, tight temporal and spatial precision. Just to show you that it works through scattering tissue, because this is a key challenge, we can place this hologram or project it through different thicknesses of brain tissue, real brain tissue, and, and measure it on the other side. You can see that all you lose some energy to scattering, you preserve the overall resolution of this approach, hundreds of microns into the brain. OK. So let me show you some data from what this looks like. So here what we're looking at is two planes in the brain simultaneously imaged for function. That's measuring the activity of these neurons. And when they turn red, that means they're firing. And what we've done here is to indicate that we're about to activate these neurons with holograms simultaneously in two depths by this little green arrow. And you can see we're writing in a small pattern, about five to 10 cells per frame or per shot in the brain. Just to demonstrate that we have reliable measurements, we can extract data, and they, can, they look something like this, where you see that red diagonal indicates the firing neuron. So trial by trial by trial, we can activate the same precise sequence of activity in the brain. But ultimately, the goal of this project, if we recall from the beginning, is to generate percepts and to understand the basis of the neural code. And for this, we have to activate de dozens, perhaps hundreds or even thousands of neurons per second in the brain of an animal. And so we need to scale this up. 
And so we made a, a bunch of advances that have to do with the opsin protein and, of course, ever-increasing power of lasers that are available to us to make this even more possible. But this is a movie that demonstrates we can do this. So this is a similar movie, except here we have three planes that we're imaging near simultaneously with resonance scanning two photon calcium imaging. And at the same time, these very brief flashes of little yellow arrows indicates when we're stimulating a group of cells distributed across this about a third cubic millimeter volume um, with a spatial light modulator. And so you can see the cells flash, and we can do this uh, really in any arbitrary pattern we want. So ultimately, we can take this technology and ask the question, at least that neuroscientists are particularly interested in, which is to crack this sort of neural code, to transform information which is in spikes into something that we can understand as humans. And the way we propose to do this using this technology is to train animals, in my case we're using mice, to discriminate different objects. In this case, we study the mouse's whisker system. It's very sensitive, like our fingertips. And they can distinguish different objects, like a sphere or a cube. We can measure the patterns, patterns of activity in their brain while they actually experience these sensory percepts, extract them computationally, but then synthesize them back in the brain using this holographic multi-photon microscope. We can then test if different features of this pattern can causally generate these percepts by quantifying the animal on a sort of simple behavioral task. But ultimately, what we want to do is actually parameterize these features, like which cells fire, how much they fire, when they fire, the temporal relationship and sequence of their activity, and ask which features of a neural code actually are critical for generating different types of sensory perceptions. And so with that, I'd just like to thank you all for listening and the funding sources and, of course, the postdocs that did all this work. Thank you. <laughs>